down here in this other town, um, I came over because I had a family member of an existing customer who needed their lawn cut. And I probably would have said to them, no, I'll be in that town on Mondays. But they had a friend that wanted a quote. So I thought, well, it's a chance to build business in this other area. So let me give it a shot. So I go and do the the, the, the one that, uh, and then I come to the next one that wants the quote. And I give him a quote via text, and I'm sitting there in the sun and waiting and waiting and waiting. So then I call, and it goes to voicemail. I leave a voicemail. So then the problem is, is I, I'm like, I got other stuff to do on the other side of the county to be in good shape coming into the weekend and have even slight chance of having a day off so the problem comes in that I either well what will inevitably happen is I'll pull out of here head on towards the rest of my route uh, and then yeah, yeah, uh, I want to do that. I want to get it done before the weekend. And I'll be like, I'm 20 miles away now. Wasn't worth it coming for that first one in the yard by itself. Uh, it's certainly not worth coming all the way back again for another solo yard. And the yard's a mess anyway. But the problem is too, they're all related and, and they know each other. So I let these people get on my nerves like this. Then uh, that's the first domino. And you end up losing them all. That's the problem with referrals. You gotta have better marketing than referrals. They just don't work. I'm trying to grow routes in, in areas that you don't that are away from you. You know, it all makes sense on paper. You're like, okay, I'll do this town on Mondays, and that way I'm not so much windshield time, not wasting fuel, you know. And then, it never works out that way like this. They're not getting back to me. What am I supposed to do? Sit here? And I know what will happen. The second I get clear over to the other side of the county and start the rest of my route for the day. Oh yeah. You know, we need it cut. Sure, that sounds good. We need it, we need it though right away. We got a party going on this weekend or something, you know, whatever. And, uh, okay. Well, I'd be cutting it for free at that point. They, they don't understand. They don't care. The, the people are so narcissistic right nowadays that they can't put themselves in anybody else's shoes. Now, if I was just doing this town, then it wouldn't be a problem. And like I said, that's the problem with trying to build routes in areas that are away from you. It, it just don't really work. And then Monday is my day to be in this area. And it's gotten to the point where I can't hardly cover everything in that one day. So... I'm gonna text them again, let them know I'm pulling out, and I won't be back in this area until Monday. I don't understand how people think. I really don't. I don't get it at all. How in hell can they be so 
so keen to have me come and give him a pull yesterday, know that I'm coming to give him a pull, even nail myself down to the time frame, you know, mid-morning. It's mid-morning, they got their quote, and they got me sitting here. I don't get it. Somebody who fights for every second, all through the course of the day, I don't understand. There's so many people that just have so much leisure, you know, just leisure. They have no comprehension of what it's like to get out there and hustle. I, I just... I texted him back that I'll wait a few more. Otherwise, I won't be back in this area until Monday. So I'm waiting. I I come out here and I try to hustle. I don't I don't understand this. But I guess I do. If you saw their yard, you know it. They got shit all over the place don't even know if I really want to do it but like I said if you piss this guy off then it, it potentially goes on back up the up the stream and you lose other other customers you know and it's like uh, I don't know but anyway while we're waiting let's talk about a little bit about uh, string trimmers now string trimmers um, if you get one that's underpowered, that you have to run it at full rip, like you say you got the, oh, I don't remember, the Echo 20, is it 2220 or something? 2320, I think it was. They say, Echo says that you have to run it like full throttle. You don't, you don't, there's no throttle modulation or control with it or anything. The problem with that is, is then it's cutting by inertia. So the string is swinging, and if it gets slowed down too much by heavy material, then the machine bogs. You got to back it off and wait for it to to speed back up and everything. And uh, the problem with with that method versus a machine that's high torque and plenty of power, where you can modulate your throttle, throttle is if you got it swinging fast enough. To to cut the grass then if it hits something else it's going to cut it too and you can also sling rocks that way so if you can handle the weight and the price i think you're better off with a better more powerful string trimmer i like the 2620t um i want to try the the next size up but it has gear reduction on the on the uh on the end and uh it's still a full two stroke so you get get all the benefits of that you don't have to deal with valves and all that stuff you get with the the two four stroke the two four stroke you still got a mixed gas but then you also got valves so in the 2620t right here at the head there's a gear reduction 1.62 to 1 i think gear reduction um so that, that one I like, um, although when I take them, I lose the gear reduction because I convert them to the split shaft. So I got, you know, just the Echo engine and then the Ryobi half shaft. So if I get the new big one, it'll be the Echo that's up from that. And I think it's the 3020 and I'll convert it to the half shaft. But back to the topic at hand is you're way better off with a uh, high torque or high power weed eater than something that's underpowered that you gotta just be running at full rip. Cause it's that full rip that you're gonna throw a rock and hit a window or cut a thermostat line or something like that. That's just my opinion. All right, I'm gonna head out. This is not worth me waiting. Have a good one. So I just want to point out there what the potential is, is that 
I came out on a single to this area, that, on, not on the day that I'm normally in this area, in, in the efforts to build a route. And if I don't handle this right, um, then I could lose three, so I could go, I could go backwards. So if I let uh, my anger get the best of me, then because you know here this would be in the chain of of uh, rec recommendation or word of mouth. This would be the fourth person in the line, and you know mathematically, if you got four people standing there, one of them is going to be an ass. That's just the math. So this must be the ass. Um, and the problem is, once you finally find the ass, if you don't handle them right, then that ass goes back to the other three and makes it an agenda issue to uh, get you off of their lawns too. Or at least gives you bad, bad uh, word of mouth. It don't matter how bad they messed you up, you know, uh, not not uh, having payment for you or, you know, none of that matters. It's just their, their natural behavior. So it's some of the issues I'm still working on. But in my mind, that's the problem with word of mouth. Um, it's a house of cards. And I kind of like what uh, Acme was doing with the uh, the mail outs um, for your area it's expensive but then those people don't all know each other and you can build route density and, and that's another thing with the word of mouth you'll have somebody in town A Oh, and, and they'll be like, oh, I like the quality of your work and everything. And my my friend that's in town C or whatever, they, they need somebody too. So actually word of mouth goes against route density probably 70% of the time. Because their friend doesn't live right next door, you know. Alright, I'm going to go to the next one. So as... Uh, Today's theme was kind of like the challenge of building routes uh, in areas that are geographically distant from your home. And the problem that came up it, after I got done with all the other griping I was doing over there in that other town, as I came to cash my checks and... Uh, and it goes along with all of this in that one of the checks that I had was for services rendered back in um, August. And I had, it's a situation where there was a, two, a pair of yards and there are ways out, but I thought I would grow a route there. Well, one of the two failed to pay me twice in a row so the third time I went I didn't do it well that made the other one a single and it's definitely not worth driving clear out there for a single so they finally got a hold of me and then I squeezed it onto my Monday route because geographically it was closer than I couldn't do a go clear out for them as another single so that made my Monday route difficult. Well, they finally paid me and they gave me two checks. And one of them I didn't notice was dated. And this was for the monies owed for the prior two, which was clear back in August. It was dated for October 22nd. And I couldn't cash it. And... You know, they apologized profusely in that they weren't, didn't pay me. They don't know about this yet. It's like not only they did pay me all that time and now they give me a check that's no good. You know, and it's not like they're around the corner that I can go and make myself whole. I mean, it's not like I'm going to be in trouble if I don't get the 
the money like right now, but it's just, it goes to this, this, uh, theory that I have that it's just not worth trying to build routes that are distant from your, your home. Um, it's not like I can go around the corner and ask them for another check. I'd have to drive w way back out there or wait. And when you're waiting, you're taking a chance. You're going to lose this check. You know what I mean? Um, and you don't have cash in your hand. So that's that's the end of the, the, the griping on this. And everybody has to make their own decisions. But for me, I don't I don't like it. I don't like I don't like these uh, routes. I don't care how much density you have. If it's far away from your home, there's going to be a lot of these things come up, this and that, and this and that. And it's like, yeah, it would work if you say you got 20 yards to do and exit town and that town's 15 miles away. And, and yeah, in theory, it will work, but it's all these little, little things that come up. There's going to be a few that don't pay you, and then they finally get right, and then they want you to come back because it's overgrown. And it, it, there's just countless little things. The mower can break down. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just not having good luck with it. So, all right, you have a good day.